I am Sarah Billiken and welcome to episode 15 of How To Be Champion Storytime. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. If my eyes look a little bit puffy, it's because I had a little cry today. And I recommend you have a little cry too if you feel like it would help. It usually does. It's small amount, but you know, give it a go. Um, we were in the middle of the chapter, Good Things That Happened at School. By the way, I've washed my hair. I just want you to notice, I've washed my hair and I dried it for the first time in months. I just leave it to dry naturally because I don't give a shit. But today, I don't know why. Maybe I thought it would make me feel better when I was crying. <laughs> but either way, dried my fucking hair. You're welcome. Uh, we are in the middle of the chapter, Good Things That Happened at School. Uh, and we are on number two, The One Time I Was Fashionable. We didn't get a school uniform until the senior school, so before that it was very much a free-for-all of pedal pushers and raw-raw skirts. Think the end party scene in Footloose, but through the day doing maths. I didn't get the raw-raw skirt till I proved to my mum that everyone had one. I have no idea how I did that. We never had much money, so my mum had a great idea to make me some skirts, and I loved them. They were pastel colours, pinks, lilacs, turquoises... With elasticated waists and a small split of the back finished with a pretty bow. No matter how much I loved them, I was very aware that having homemade clothes was not the done thing. Yet another thing to be ready for criticism on. I felt the same way about clothes then as I do now. I want to be covered, clean, warm and look nice. One of the kind girls at school, Louise, didn't ask me where I got my skirt, the question I was dreading. I'm crap at lying and still have priced Tourette's today when complimented by anything I'm wearing. That's a nice top. Eight quid. Louise asked if my skirt was from Topshop. I still beam at the memory. Topshop, you bugger. Topshop. She said she thought she'd seen it in there. And her mam ran a catalogue so she knew fashion and always had all the best tops. Number three. I was fleetingly the Beyonce of my school. I hated PE. I could just about get away with rounders and hockey, but I hated netball and always dawdled through a cross-country run chatting at the back with my friend Diane and then grassing up those who cut through the allotments so that I wasn't technically last. But they introduced dance and I loved it. I've always loved dancing, especially as I didn't even need to wear my glasses for it. If I couldn't be bothered to get my pram out from under all of the camping gear in the cupboard under the stairs, I used to just dance in the hall instead. I joined a dance class for one session. They taught us how to shimmy on the first day and even at eight I considered it overly sexual so didn't go back. Instead, my sister and I did what we called gymnastics, which mostly involved us wearing leotards and shouting, ta-da, with our arms in the air. they called presents, apparently. We call them ta-da's. Our name is better. We were taught dances and we made up dances. I was really happier than when in a lycra cat suit and making fresh bruises by chucking myself about. How things change. I stood up from the sofa the other day to make a cup of tea and my niece said, are you sure? Number four, I discovered I could write. We had a writing competition at junior school judged by the headmaster, Mr. Hoban, who was mostly known for chewing something on his way to the stage in assembly. He clearly never got stage fright. When I first started doing stand-up, I would get so nervous that I couldn't eat for five hours before my gig. Now, even though I still get nervous, I'm much better at the eating. I can be picking chicken out my teeth as they're announcing my name. Sometimes on the last tour, we ate Nando so close to showtime that I do small, sneaky burps during the first five minutes on stage. We called them thoughtful moments. Look thoughtful, sneak out a small, meaty burp. If you've ever been on the front row and got a whiff of peri-peri, then that was my belch. Or in the second half, a chickeny fart. When writing stories in class, I often ran out of time. The teacher would say, pens down, when I was only three quarters done. On those occasions, I'd quickly add the line, so they all went home and had their tea, which seems to end all stories really well. Think about it. Why wouldn't fairies, rabbits, dancers, care bears, pterodactyls go home for their tea? See, no reason. The story I wrote for this particular competition came first. It was only half done. Another indicator that I could write, and also that Mr. Hoban thought going home for your tea was important and final too. 
And that is the end of episode 15. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a good day. Um, in the comments, uh, please let me know what is the worst thing you wore as a teenager. I wore raw, raw skirts and pedal pushers, as I mentioned earlier in this, in this episode. Let me know what is the worst thing you wore as a teenager. Uh, and have a good rest of day. Keep smelling if you can. Uh, take, take care. Stay inside. And wash your fucking hands. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.